This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. And by Boris Effects, a leading developer of visual effects, titling, video editing, and workflow tools and plugins for broadcast, post production, and film professionals. And by Rampant Design Tools, creators of QuickTime based style effects for video and designed to significantly enhance content for editors, visual effects artists, and motion graphic designers. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial. And in this lesson, I want to talk about another very interesting concept that not a lot of people talk about in tutorials, and that is background services and more specifically background processing. And in this lesson, I want to get in, I want to show you how you can set up some background consolidating. It could be really, it could be consolidating or transcoding. How you'll be able to set that up in the background so that Media Composer can do the work on your clips outside of your application so that you can keep working in your timeline. And then literally with a click of a button, all of your newly consolidated or transcoded media will appear in your bin literally with the click of that mouse. Now, before we go on, I want to remind you that these tutorials are designed to get in and take a very in-depth look at very specific aspects of editing inside of Avid Media Composer. But sometimes you just need to get the information and get yourself up and running lightning fast. Well, if that's the case, head on over and check out my Mac Pro video training series on Media Composer, where lesson one will get you up and running in Media Composer in about an hour. All right, now before we get started, there are a couple of things that I do need to point out. And the first thing I wanna point out is that for this tutorial to work properly, you're going to need to make sure that your Avid background services are running. Now you'll see that mine have already started. You'll also see that on the Mac, they are lit up as green. They'll be lit up as green on PC as well. Now, important for PC users, you will find your background services manager located down in the bottom toolbar in most cases in the lower right hand corner of the dock. Now, what you'll also want to make sure of is that once you are in Media Composer, you'll notice right here on my timeline, I have this button right here that is actually the dynamic media folders. You'll see I happen to have them open right now. If I click on that and my background services are running, it will automatically open the dynamic media folders. If your background services are not running, you will actually get an error when you click on this. Now, you can also find the dynamic media folders if you navigate up to tools, you'll see them right here as well. You'll also see that you can see your background queue and the background services as well. You can also see that you can get in, set up a couple options in here like to always start the services at launch, which in most cases I sort of do. You know, I wanna make sure that that's set so that I don't ever have to worry about getting in and doing it after the fact. Um, and we can also start and stop it from here as well. But obviously, since we want it for this lesson, I'm just going to leave it running. I'm going to say OK. Now, what we're also going to need outside of Media Composer is a location to put files. Let's say they're, you know, camera files that you've shot. Maybe they're After Effects renders that you've done. You're going to need a location to drop all of these files into. So what I've done on my media drive here is I have a folder called appropriately enough dump folder. It's basically a folder that I'm just going to take my media, dump it into and let Media Composer do its thing. Now, I do need to actually get this to be, you know, set up before we start working, because if I don't tell Media Composer what I want it to do, it's not going to know what to do. All right, so let's get this set up. What we're going to do is head back to our dynamic media folders and we're going to set up a profile and then a actual dynamic media folder. So let's do that. What we're going to do is I'm going to come to the profile editor. Let's just bring that right over here to the middle here. And what we're going to do is just twirl down our link settings and actions. Now, what's important to also keep in mind is that technically what is going to happen when we set this up is that Media Composer is automatically going to AMA link to clips in the background and it's going to start consolidating or transcoding these clips automatically. So keep that in mind is that when you're done, you're going to see that you're going to have the link to files and the final files in your bin. And now that you've got your consolidated or transcoded media, you can just delete those link to files if you want to. Okay. Now, what I normally do before I get in and take a look at the plugins and bins and such and the like is to actually set up the process that we're going to do. So let's come down and let's add a process. Now, you'll see that we have three options. We can copy to a folder, we can consolidate or transcode. Now, normally what I like to do is I don't normally transcode anything. Now, when I say that I don't transcode anything, I don't necessarily mean that. But what I mean is 
I want Media Composer to always have the option to consolidate first before it just gets in and starts transcoding. There's no point in recompressing media if you don't have to. So I'm going to select Consolidate. I'm going to twirl this down. Now, why didn't I say that I transcode anything? Because you'll notice that inside of my Consolidate option, I actually have a section down below that says, if you can't consolidate, then transcode it, which is a fantastic feature to have right here. This way you don't have to worry about Media Composer erroring out if it's trying to consolidate something that is not a Avid friendly codec. It'll just switch over and automatically start transcoding. Now for the purposes of what we're doing, I know that the clips that I'm going to be consolidating are ProRes, which is a supported codec, so I'm going to be good to go. Okay, now you'll see that I could skip the media already on the target drive. Now, I should also mention that all of these options that you find are actually available in the Consolidate and Transcode uh, window when you right click on a clip. Now, I'm just going to leave all of this deselected and we're going to now come up and decide what we actually want to do with this media when we're going to bring it in. Now, in most cases, when you're AMA linking to clips, you want Media Composer to automatically detect what plugin is required. You can get in and be specific if you want to. We'll just leave it as general for now. Now the big one for me is what bin do we want this media to go into? You'll see that we can create a new bin and we could choose the default bin naming convention, choose a volume name, or, a or we can specify a bin name. But for me, I normally just like to use the active bin because in a lot of cases I'll open a bin, I'll start working, doing some stuff, and just let Media Composer st stuff the you know stuff those clips into that bin, and I can just move them after the fact. Okay, so we'll just use the active bin, and we have some other link to options for things like multi-channel audio, and even for the audio start time for broadcast wave files. And you can also get in and adjust some metadata information as well. But I'm going to leave all of these except for the bin option, which is now set to use active bin on their presets. And we can now come down and say save. Now we're going to be asked to give this profile a name and we'll call it appropriately enough consolidate. Let's make sure I spell that right. There we go, consolidate. And I'm going to say, okay, now everyone kind of gets excited at this point. They're like, yay, we're all set to go. And they, you know, start throwing clips into the dump bin, thinking everything's going to work out and nothing happens. And they're like, oh, Media Composer's broken. What's going on here? Well, Media Composer is actually working, right? We just haven't told it what we actually want it to look for yet. We've set our profile up and we're set to go. And you'll see, we can even get a little summary of what's going to be going on down here as well if we needed to. But what I want to do now is actually set up that folder. So let's do that. What I'm going to do is just hit the little plus icon to add a folder to the dynamic media folder window. And I'm going to be asked which folder I'd like to use. Now I'm going to use the dump folder appropriately enough. So I will say open. Now you'll see that it's set the profile here. Now we could have multiple dynamic media file folders here doing different things if we wanted to. So keep that in mind. We could have one folder, you know, transcoding. We could have one consolidating. We can even have one copying media to folders to be checked in by Interplay if we wanted to. Very, very cool. You'll see that we also get some other information in here, like what the path of that folder is, what the target bin is, which is the active bin, what profile we're using, and what folder is actually being used. Now, we do need to enable this process before we start using it, and we're now, believe it or not, all set to go. I don't need to tell it to start. I don't need to tell it to do anything because it's already started, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide out a Media Composer. I'm gonna come to my Media Drive. Let's come to my Footage folder here, and I'm gonna come into my Basketball folder here. Let's just take the first, I don't know, four clips, okay? I'm going to copy these clips. We're just going to assume they're coming off, you know, a, a shoot card or something like that. And I'm going to come to the dump folder. And I'm going to place these in the dump folder. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that once I place them in the dump folder, it might take Media Composer a minute or so for it to cycle through and then start processing the clips. So I'm going to paste them into this folder. It's a pretty quick process here to paste them in because they're coming from one folder to another on the same drive here. Now, I always copy instead of moving because I don't want to accidentally delete this media after the fact. Now, once I have the media in there, I'm going to want to see what exactly Media Composer is doing. So I'm going to come back up to my background services and I'm going to open up the background queue. Now, once I open up the background queue, you'll see that I have some jobs that were finished here and some that actually errored out. And I'm just going to give Media Composer a second here to figure out what it's doing. Now, while I wait for that, I'm going to come back into the application. I'm going to come back to my dynamic media folders window and you're going to notice that a new icon has appeared under acquire. And if you were watching in the background, you'll see 
that my clips are now processing. You'll see that we have three clips that are processing and the fourth one has just appeared. So what I'm gonna do is hide out a Media Composer because I wanna show you what it's actually doing. At any point in this whole process, whether I needed the clips right away or whether I wanted to wait for them, I could simply click the Acquire button. And as soon as I do that, you're now gonna see that those four clips, the master clips, and the link to files have now appeared in the project. And you'll see that these clips have already been consolidated. The whole process is actually already done. You'll see the job is complete, the files are now here, and we're now ready to keep working. I can now just simply delete this link to media, say OK, and believe it or not, that's the whole process done. You can see there, media one, the clips have been consolidated, and we're actually all set to go. You'll also see that if I choose my clips with codec view, you'll see these have all been consolidated with the Apple ProRes codec. In the background, I could have kept editing and had zero downtime at all. This is a fantastic and very underutilized feature, and I think the reason that it's underutilized is that a lot of people run into issues when they're trying to get their um, background services running. Now, let's say you're in a situation where for some reason, no matter what you do, you cannot get the background services to start running. Well, here's what you're gonna do to attempt to kickstart it into action. What I normally will do is quit out a Media Composer, I'll just hide Media Composer for the purposes of what we're doing, and I've noticed that a lot of problems with background services seem to revolve right around your AVX2 plugins. So on the Mac, we're gonna head into our library, into application support, into uh, Avid and AAVX2, there they are. So what I would suggest doing is that if you're trying to start the background services and every time you start it, it, you know, it runs for about a minute and then it turns back red again and stops itself, the first thing I want you to do is to come into this folder. I'm gonna give you the Windows location on the screen right now. I want you to come into this folder. I want you to remove, you know, create a folder on your desktop, remove all of these plugins, stick them into that folder on the desktop, and then restart Media Composer and try to get the background services running. Chances are you will be able to get it to work. Once you've gotten it to work, quit out of Media Composer. Then take all these uh, AVX2 plugins, put them back into the same folder, launch Media Composer and see if background services run. If they do, perfect, you're off to the races. If they don't, you know that it's one plugin inside of this folder that could be causing you the problems. Now, why would it be causing you problems? Maybe it's an older plugin that needs to be updated. In a lot of cases, a simple update to a plugin will solve a lot of your problems. So my first suggestion is, is that if you still have problems with background services, start sticking the AVX2 plugins back into the folder one or two at a time until you figure out which plugin itself is causing the problem. Then check to see if there's an update. And if there isn't an update and you want to use the background services feature, just take that AVX2 plugin, stick it into another folder again on the desktop or into an external drive, do what you need to do. And then at the point where you're ready to work with that plugin, drop it back in again. Now I know that's not the greatest of workarounds, but like I said, I actually had this problem right before we started this tutorial. I moved everything out, got it running, put everything back in, and I was back up and running probably in about two minutes. Now, as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you that if you're looking for great deals on Avid Media Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase at videoguys.com. MC101 is going to be a coupon code that you're going to love because the great team at Boris FX is offering a 10% discount on BCC10 AVX or multi-host licenses, full or upgrades, again using the coupon code MC101. And finally, Rampant Design Tools is offering 25% off any non-discounted product they offer in their library, again, you guessed it, by using coupon code MC101. And finally, don't forget that if you have any questions, if you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.